Well, in this video, we're gonna explore the differences between the profile symbol and runout symbol for controlling round cylindrical shafts. Now, this is an excerpt from Unit 13 of our Geotel Pro online program, which I have a link to in our description below. So let's use this as a simplified example of just two shafts. We have the larger diameter selected as datum feature A with a size tolerance, and the other diameter has to be kept coaxial centered. And the two options that I have now are profile or runout. Now notice the difference between these. Profile requires a basic dimension for the size, where runout always requires a size tolerance. So those are gonna be the two key differences in seeing these surface control differences. So let's first start with profile tolerance. So profile tons, we have a basic diameter of 24.5, and this creates a tolerance zone that wraps around the true profile, around the surface. So that's gonna be 0.1 in and 0.1 out. Then it's gonna wrap around, so you're gonna get a tolerance zone of 0.1 out and 0.1 in. So it creates a tolerance zone of two coaxial cylinders that are centered around that datum axis. And the key word here is they're fixed in size. They're centered around the basic diameter of 24.5. Now this is gonna control all the variation on the feature. It controls how centered it is. See if it's off-center this way or off-center that way, you're gonna fail your profile tons if it's too far out. Also, it controls size at the same time, too small or too big, that could fail the profile tons. So profile is controlling the size and the coaxiality in the same shot, in the same tolerant zones. So now let's compare that to runout. Runout is also a surface control but it does not include the size. These tolerance zones are now variable in size. You don't have a fixed basic size where the tolerance zone has to be centered around. It could be variable. Now this means that runout is gonna control coaxiality, location, the orientation, and the form, but it does not control the size. Look how a big or a small shaft could still have perfect runout. So you can make a big shaft, has perfect runout, or you can make a small shaft, has perfect runout. So the distances between the two cylinders is fixed, but the size of the cylinders is variable. I have examples of these in my Geotel Pro book, which I've linked in the description below if you'd like to read more about this. I have both the profile tons and the runout and circular runout and position all at once, and those are shown in unit 13 of that book. All right, now let's look at an example to compare when you would use runout versus when you would use profile. Remember, the only difference is profile includes the size with its profile tons, where runout is gonna have a separate size tolerance and then a separate runout. All right, let's look at this example of a rotating shaft, kind of the theme of this unit 13 here. It mounts into a main bearing that's fixed in the housing and there's a sensor above. There's a certain air gap or clearance that's always necessary between these parts, like a sensor or something needs to sense how fast it's rotating, too close and it'll rub, too far away, it won't sense anymore. So first we have to select the datum feature this one's pretty obvious, I think, the one that mounts into a bearing is definitely gonna be A, that creates our datum axis. And we wanna keep this centered so that we get that certain air gap or clearance between the parts at all times. So our two options are profile and runout. They're both gonna be surface controls. And that's what we want here. We don't want position, because position's more of an axis of high points here. And we want the surface to be within the tolerance zone to control the gap. So what's the difference? Profile includes the size with its profile, so control size and location of the same shot, or do you want to have a separate size and then a separate runout? Do you want two problems or do you want one problem? I got enough problems to deal with, so I like to just have one problem, and that's profile. Profile works so well for this. You keep this basic, 56, that's the ideal geometry that I want. Don't get too close, don't get too far away. Don't get too close where it rubs, don't get too far away where it doesn't sense anymore. And that would, of course, apply all the way around because it's pointing to a cylindrical feature. So one number that gets the job done all at once. Now, do be careful with profile tons because when I put a profile tons of 0.2 on this surface, it's kind of like saying 56 plus or minus 0.2 if we're talking the diameter. <laughs> now, what's tricky on this one, it is plus or minus 0.1. That's how people think of profile tons is plus or minus 0.1, but per side. That's going to get you on the other side also. So if you put a profile 0.2, it's going to be a plus or minus 0.1 relative to our datum axis, which actually will create the whole diameter, it could be plus or minus 0.2. I think everybody learns that the first day on the lathe, right? Oh, one on a radius cuts two on a diameter. So be careful with profile tons on a diameter because it'll get you twice. So there's our boundaries there, 56 plus or minus 0.2. Now I want to show the alternative. How could we do this with runout? Because we could do this with runout also. So if we do with runout, we'll say diameter 56, we'll do total runout, 
relative to a. Now remember, when we use run out, what do we always have to do to the size? Tolerance it. Give it a plus minus. So now how much plus minus do we give the size and how much run out do we give it? Well, people say, well, just put plus or minus 0.2 on there to match the other one. Well, then you have to have zero run out and nobody can do that and that's impossible. So now we're going to have to take a little bit off the size to give to the run out. Okay, so how do we split this up? Well, I guess most people would say put 0.1 on the size and then put 0.1 on the run out. I guess that would work, right? 56.1 is the biggest shaft you could make. And if that 56.1 wobbled 0.1, it would give an effective boundary of 56.2. Or the other effect, 55.9 could be the smallest if it wobbled, its effective inner boundary would be 55.8. And that would give you the same boundaries as what we got with profile. So yes, you could do it with the yellow profile or the red runout. Now, which one do you think manufacturing would rather build to? Would manufacturing rather build to the profile or to the runout? The profile. The profile gives you more size tons. Profile says, I'll give you plus or minus 0.2 as long as you keep the coaxiality good. Where this one says, no, you get plus or minus 0.1 for the size and 0.1 for the runout. And you see why manufacturing would prefer the yellow is how are they going to make this part? Probably on a lathe. And what are they going to do? Cut the diameter A at the same time as they cut the other diameter. Do they have a problem with runout? No. They cut them in the same operation. That's easy. What they have problems with is size, moving the tool in and out. So this option of profile gives them more size as long as they keep the run out good. And manufacturing says, no problem, we always keep the run out good. So this kind of pigeonholes your tolerance where it says, oh, you get one for size, one for run out. Can I get more run out? No. Can I get more size? No. You get one for this, one for that. <laughs> you know, the analogy I use for this is, let's say, hey, I'll buy you dinner tonight. I'll give you 20 bucks for dinner. Well, great. Oh, with one more stipulation, I'll give you $10 for a drink and $10 for food. Could, could I get more food? I, I'd actually just going to have water. Nope, you get $10 for a drink, you get $10 for food. Where Profile says, hey, here's 20 bucks, use it for whatever you want. You want to buy three beers and eat some pretzels, that's fine. Or you want to drink some water and have a steak, either one works for me. Here's 20 bucks, use it as needed. And that's what the yellow does. It gives more flexibility for manufacturing. If your functional need is only an end gap, then only tolerance one thing, which is the gap. Where I find good uses for runout is when the size doesn't matter, but how true it runs is more important. We use runout for pulleys and seals, where maybe the size of this diameter doesn't matter so much as long as it stays centered. A pulley is a great example. Big pulley, small pulley, as long as it runs true. So adjustable size tolerances, runout, where you need fixed size, gaps, distances, that's more profile. Well, I thought of another example to talk about the differences between those two coaxial controls. A brake drum on a large truck. So we have a rear axle coming out looking like this. And then you have cutaway here. This is going to be a little pilot that it centers on at the studs where you attach the wheel right here. Then your brake drum is going to mount on this face right here. Has clearance holes for those studs. It pilots and self-locates on that little diameter right there. Clearance hole coming around like this. Now you're going to have a dust shield back here. And then you're going to have shoes inside this brake drum. And you're going to have the mechanism that can push them out. So when you step on the brakes, these shoes will contact here and slows down the vehicle. So there's definitely some coaxial requirements that need to happen for all this to function properly. So let's look at our brake drum. Draw that in the side view that looks like this. Remember that pilot diameter right here. And then we got those clearance holes over here. So first, we have to select datum features. What would you pick as datum features on this piece? And like what sets up the attitude? There's not really an axis that's long enough here. So I like to select the inside face here as A first. So that'll create initial plane that sets up the attitude. Now we need an axis to center up on, and I thought this diameter is perfect. That's the one that pilots and self-locates on here. So that'll be selected as our B feature. No need for a tertiary clocking wasn't really that important. So now this diameter is very critical. This is what the shoes are going to contact on. And we need to make sure that that stays centered. It stays coaxial relative to your AB. Now I'm going to actually discount position right away. Because remember, position was an axis control. And it doesn't really control the form. It only looks at the high points. And we actually need the entirety of the surface for this one. So I think our choices are either going to be a runout 
or a profile. Now remember the differences between total runout and profile. Total runout gives you a separate size tolerance and then makes sure it runs out. Where profile makes it basic and combines the size and the location in the same shot. So I guess the decision here is, is the size important? Do you need a separate size and then a separate runout? Or do you want to combine everything into size and run out at the same time? Now when I think about a brake drum, you know, these shoes are adjustable. You know, you could have a big drum, you could have a small drum, and it'll work just fine because the shoes will adjust until they contact depending on how hard you press. So I think on this one, we want to give a diameter, you know, 10 inches, maybe plus or minus 20. Because size doesn't really matter because of the adjustability in the shoes. But we do need to make sure that it runs true when it does make contact. That's a really good one for a run out. Run true, run out. And so then we put a total run out on here of 5,000 relative to our AB. So the plus or minus 20 is how big and small it can be. It doesn't really matter for function, but we need to make sure that it runs true relative to your AB. And remember that run out, all that is, is it's just controlling the position, the coaxiality, plus the cylindricity. Do you see how you don't really need cylindricity? Because you just don't want it to be a perfect cylinder and that's it. You want it to be cylindrical and centered on your datum axis. So that's why your upgrade to a total runout would get both of those jobs done at the same time. Now some people ask, well do you really need total runout on there? Do we, could we get away with just using a circular runout instead? Now remember that's two dimensional, 2D. So a circular runout is going to be giving you a position and just a circularity. So each cross section has to be circular but you don't have to be cylindrical. Now that would allow our component to become tapered because each cross section has good runout. Each cross section has good runout. Each cross section has good runout, but it wouldn't keep it cylindrical. Now maybe if you had a brother-in-law that sold shoes, then that would be a good one for that one. It would wear shoes down pretty quickly, but I think if you want to have even wear on those shoes all the way around, I think we need a total runout on this. And that total run out would also keep it cylindrical and get good life on your shoes as well. So that's, I think, a good example for a total run out where the size doesn't really matter, but the run out has to be very good. It needs to run true no matter what size it is. Well, hopefully that application helps. Sometimes seeing those practical things really helps bring these things together. And for more practical examples and lots more explanations, please see our Geotal online fundamentals program that I've linked in the description below. Thanks for the likes and subscribes, and see you next time.